With Lecture 16.1, we begin Chapter 7. We'll start with the concept of manometers, which are used to measure the pressure of gases. As a summary, from Chapters 2 to 6, we've been examining components by themselves, atoms, ionic compounds, and molecular compounds. Starting with Chapter 7, we'll be looking at bulk properties. Chapter 7 starts with a discussion of gases. The properties of gases are predictable by the gas laws. There are different variables of state that can be used to describe gases, and they have units. Gases will have pressure. One unit this is measured in is atmospheres. There are some conversion factors. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. That can also be 760 tor in honor of Torricelli, who studied the gas laws. I'll explain shortly how one atmosphere is linked to a distance. Gases also have volume. We'll be working in standard international units, so that will be liters. Gases have temperatures. The best unit to measure gas temperature in is Kelvin. There are conversion factors. Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. That relationship will also be covered shortly. Gases also have a variable amount. Many students know N as the principal quantum number. It is also a symbol for moles of material. And then there is the ideal gas law constant, known as capital R, and it has the numeric value, 0 0.0821, and the units that gases are measured in, atmosphere, liters, per Kelvin, mole. Before we get into the gas laws, First, I must explain the relationship between atmospheres and a distance. When gas pressure is measured, one of the ways this is done is with a barometer. Here is a diagram of a bowl of mercury liquid and a glass tube in which the end of the glass tube is immersed in the liquid. If one has equal gas pressure outside the tube, and inside the tube, the liquid within the tube, which is mercury, will be at the same level. However, if the glass tube has been evacuated to zero pressure, then the pressure of the atmosphere will press down on the liquid such that the mercury rises up the tube to a particular height. That height is 760 millimeters at sea level or 76 centimeters, which is a bit more than a meter. The reason mercury is used for this measurement is that it's 13.5 grams per milliliter. If water were used, the tube would need to be 33.7 feet high. I hope you can see how an apparatus that's a little taller than a yard is much more convenient than one that is two stories high. In chemical experiments, often the pressure of gas is measured with an open-end manometer. So here we have a bulb full of some gas, and then it goes through a U-bend. And within this glass tube is mercury. The top of the glass tube is open to the atmosphere. So we have the atmosphere, which on this particular day happens to be 766 millimeters of mercury, and the trapped gas in the bulb. Now if the gas in the bulb and the atmosphere are at the same pressure, then the liquid level in the U-tube is the same on both sides. But if there is a difference in pressure, then the height of the mercury is going to tell us what that pressure is. Suppose the height difference is 18 millimeters. So we have the atmosphere pushing down, and we also have the trapped gas pushing down. 
Which one of these two is at a higher pressure? Should I take 766 and subtract 18, or should I add 18? To decide whether or not to use plus or minus, one needs to decide if the trapped gas is greater or less than 766 millimeters of mercury. I hope you decide that it must be greater because the trapped gas is pushing down harder than the atmosphere. So the trapped gas must be at greater pressure than the atmosphere. So the pressure of the gas is 766 plus 18. That would be 784 millimeters of mercury. Here's a different scenario. This time, when we look at the liquid in the U-tube, it's higher on the trapped gas side. The height difference for this example is 25 millimeters. So is the trapped gas at greater or less pressure than 766 millimeters of mercury? Do I add or do I subtract? Well, it appears that the atmosphere is pushing down harder than the trapped gas. So the trapped gas must be at a lower pressure. So we should take 766 and subtract 25, and we'll wind up with 741 millimeters of mercury. So here is your question. What is the pressure of the trapped gas in the bulb? And you notice I have placed the bulb on the opposite side. So you can't just go with left side minus right side. First, you need to decide, should I use 766 plus 250, which is the difference, or minus 250? The other thing you should be concerned about is the units. The gas pressure is being measured in units of millimeters of mercury, but the units on the answers are atmospheres. So I remind you that once you get your answer, one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury.